let me just bring to the show our second guest this morning, um, Dan Gramza, President Gramza Capital Management. Dan, good Friday morning. Thanks so much for joining. It is my pleasure, Ali. It's great to be with you. So Dan, I'm very happy to have you on the show today because I really would like to hear your take on markets. I mean, where, where are we heading to? Uh, do you think that we're going to see more selling or we're not going to see more selling? Is this a bond bear market or is this not a bond bear market? I mean, how do you see the situation? Well, those are all good observations, by the way, that you're talking about. Let's start with the stock market. The reaction we saw yesterday, we had some earnings that weren't favorable, and that set a certain tone, I'd say, in the market. But the real key is what you mentioned here about inflation. And what we got feedback from the St. Louis president, a uh, Fed president, and you know he's going to be a voting member this time around. And what did he say? He said, well, I'd like to see the interest rate up, uh, by increase by 1% by July 1st. And we should have a half a point or 50 basis point increase in the March meeting. Uh, the market really reacted to that. And the issue when it comes to the Fed, which is not an easy job by any means. Not at all. But no. And, and their tools that they have, they have about three major tools they can use to have an impact on our economy and the amount of money available. Uh, they're like a big hammer. They're not little tiny adjustments. So when we do make an adjustment, it takes six months, 18 months for our economy to feel it. The market will react instantly like we saw yesterday. But the concern is that the, mar the Fed goes too far too fast. And when you hear a half a point, now they haven't increased or changed interest rates by half a point, if I remember correctly, in, since 2000. So to see that kind of action, that bold type of action, uh, you kind of wonder, is it necessary? And here's why I say that. You brought up a good point here, Alex. You said we have inflation, but I think we should have inflation. Is our supply demand situation kind of imbalanced? No, the supplies are still tight. Demand is still high, actually. And that is a formula to create inflation. So it's not surprise, surprising to see that from my point of view. So what should we be doing here? Should we calm down the market with an increase in interest rates? Because that closes down credit which can slow down some of the demand and expansion in an economy. Sure, 25 basis points I think is very tolerable for the market. What I hope the Fed doesn't do is start increasing every Fed meeting. We've seen that in the past. I and mean, if you look at 2000, 2000 to 2003 or 2006 to 2007, uh, I, I really hope the Fed doesn't go back to that. I like the action that we've seen from the Fed where it's been very conservative, very dovish. I think that's healthy because we're not finished with the virus. Are we recovering? Yes. Are we done? No. Could it turn around again? Yes. And now let's talk about the S&P. You brought that up here. And what we'd want to see today is actually f what we did see Let's talk about that. As yesterday was a down day, Asia and the European session, your time zone, the market got weaker. But we saw towards the latter part of the European time zone for the futures market that it bounced, that we're seeing some buyers coming into that market. I do look for follow through to the upside. Ideally, today in the S&P, we'd want to see this market closing above 4530. That would be a very clean strong close and we still have this magic well 4585 is a big deal for that market and 46 even if we could be above that by the end of next week that really says something about a longer term action if we do not get above 4600 by the end of next week i look for a sideways move here the action that we see today i think is an important barometer in other words do people want to go home short the market? And at this point, I don't think they do. So the indications we have right now are buyers are coming back into the market. The issue is, is it going to be sustainable? The next three to four trading sessions will give us clues about that price action.
I'd like to touch on what you said. I mean, you say that having inflation, I mean, it's not that bad, but it's 7.5%. Do you think that this is easy for, uh, how can I say, for, 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 for the low wage consumers? Uh, no, no. Do we feel it? It, it? it has a big impact on our economy. Uh, the less money I have to spend on other things, uh, it's not good for our economy. You, you want to remember the United States is a consumer driven economy. You know, we're not a saving economy. If Japan, for example, I think they save at twice the rate that we do in the United States. 70% of our GDP is based upon consumer spending. So now if, I, if it costs me more money to fill up my gasoline in my tank, or if it costs more for me to buy food, that's less money I have to buy other things. So inflation does have an impact on us, and it isn't something that we want to see going crazy. We do have to pay attention to it because right. it also can throttle down our economy as well. So it's important. I just don't think we want to see the Fed doing it too fast. Yeah, so I was wondering, uh, talking about a Fed, and then we're going to reconnect with markets, but what's your take on Bullard's uh, comments? He, he, he said that he supports 1% um, rate hike by July, which is probably a little too hawkish and to me uh, as an external observer. Uh, it looks like betting at this point be, be, because it's it's kind of weird hearing one percentage point of rate hike in just two Fed meetings which means 50 basis points per meeting. Correct, correct. I'm with you 100%. I think it is too aggressive. It is too hawkish for the Fed to do that. It is troublesome to me when the presidents from the various Fed districts come out with certain statements that really don't follow the, the action that we're seeing coming from the Fed. And this is a very aggressive step that he's talking about. I am not in favor of that. And I hope that other members of the Federal Reserve kind of calm that down a bit. But it does set a tone. And again, we saw the market react to that. Uh, not surprising. That's a typical reaction. When you see that yields go up, risk comes off. That means the stock market comes down and our yields go up on the anticipation of that type of action. You mentioned it earlier when you're showing us the yield curve. Uh, that's not unusual reaction, but I'd like to see that calm down. Dan, let me ask you, what's your take on the dollar index? Yesterday, we saw major movements when it comes to the bond market, or we, we shall say major selling, to be more precise, bond yield surging on the other side. Dollar index was up about three tenths of a percent, then down about four tenths of a percent, then of course, zero dollar uh, kind of um, above and below the 1.14 level so far at 1.1392. So uh, can we have any kind of short term forecast considering the fact that one thing is certain the, the Fed is going to hike rates as soon as possible, whether 25 basis points or 50 basis points. I mean, probably this is uh, the only question mark at this point. Yeah, I think you're right. Will they do something? Yes. The market is really anticipating that and the probability is they will do something. And we are flirting with that 9600 level. But do we have a reason for that? And I guess that's the thing that I wonder about here. What would be in favor for demand for U.S. dollars? Well, a higher return in our stock market, that would do it. A higher return on interest rate products, that would do it. If our yield curve did firm up a bit, that would be attractive to other countries to convert their currencies, euros, into dollars to buy investments in the United States. That could create some upward movement, but we're not seeing that level of commitment today. And can we get a close above 96? That That's the tricky bit. We, we were up there yesterday and it sold off. Up there today and it's selling off. So I don't have a lot of confidence in the dollar right now maintaining upward momentum. I think we need to be cautious about that market. And we do not want to see it trading near that 95.50 uh, within the next two days. If we do, I would look for lower weakness in the uh, dollar index and the possible beginning of a sideways move. 
and, and, and then of course, final take on commodities. What's your take on gold? What are um, these weekend um, levels that are you're looking at? And, and certainly your expectations for next week, considering that we saw also very nice movements of the, from the gold. It, it, we did. You're right. We did see that. And the issue is, when it comes to gold, if we look at how it's behaved over the last few months, is it sustainable? And we saw yesterday the market got above 1840 and then it backed off right away. Today we're seeing some buyers coming into it. Uh, we saw buyers coming in yesterday, but it opened weak in Asia. It's been firming up in the European time zone. The, I think for this market, the real important area would be by Wednesday of next week to close above 1850. If we could see something like that, that implies that buyers are here and we may get some follow through. If we don't do that, again, in this market, I'm not necessarily bearish, but I would look for a sideways move. And, and what about um, copper? Copper is one that really does mystify me. Isn't that an interesting market? You, you know, we think about the global situation and demand for copper. It is so unique. We don't have a substitute for copper. And the demand for it is incredible. China, our friends in China, consume about 48% of the global supply. Uh, United States is number two, Germany's number three in terms of consumption of copper. If our manufacturing starts to increase more, we're going to have some more and more demand on copper. This one, I do expect higher prices, but my expectation is not what the market's contemplating. We're seeing weakness coming into that market today, and the price action that we're looking at right now implies Monday we could be closing below 450, that we could see continued weakness there. The, the major reference in this market, <clears throat> excuse me, is 470. It chokes me up just thinking about this. <laughs> that, that, that 470 over the next few days would be important. If buyers are here, then we want to be above 470 by the close of next week. Right now, I don't see that happening. We have not gotten low enough or cheap enough right now for buyers to come in on copper. I think that's the issue here. So further weakness, near term, yes, long term, that 470 is going to be an important level for us. Thank you very much. John Gramsa, President Gramsa Capital Management. Have a great weekend and talk to you soon then. Thank you, Alex. You too.